Hello and welcome back. This week we're going to be going over, I think, one of the most important questions that I will be answering in this entire class, and that is, what is a mask? Um, to me, masking in Photoshop is one of the most important concepts that we'll learn because it truly is the foundation of everything else that we do in this class when it comes to Photoshop. So over the next couple of weeks, we will really be focusing on understanding what a mask is and learning different techniques of masking objects so that they look really professional and concise. So to give you an example of what masking is and how you use it is let's say that you go online and you are trying to find something to put into one of your renderings. So this could be a plant or a person, maybe even a sofa. Um, let's use the sofa example. Let's say you go to West Elm and you find the sofa and that sofa is in another living room. You know, it's already in a scene. What you can do in Photoshop is use masking to control um, or isolate that object. In fact, in Photoshop terms, masking is defined as controlling the transparency of a layer. So transparency means what is visible, what is not visible. So in masking, you can control whether you know the entire scene that the sofa is in is shown or you can mask that object so just the sofa is seen. Um, a mask is different than erasing. If you have used something like Microsoft Paint, maybe you've even used Photoshop, there is an erase tool, but we're not going to be using um, the erase tool. And the reason why we don't use the erase tool is because it destroys pixels. Um, what I mean by that is once you've erased those pixels, they're gone. You can't bring them back. So we don't want to destroy pixels. So to show you guys a real kind of life example that ties in with this, these are some photos of baby Naima. And these are priceless to me. These were photos that were taken in Kabul, Afghanistan. And um, I wish my mom knew Photoshop because for whatever reason, she wanted to Photoshop something out of this picture. Now, instead of you know leaving it in there, she destroyed pixels she actually destroyed the image by just cutting this whole image out. We can't bring it back. So look what happened. I used to be so cute. <laughs> uh, so in Photoshop, we don't ever want to erase something because it's going to be like this. We can't bring back that background. So to show you an example, um, I have a photo here, you know, of a famous couple, Homer and Marge. Sorry, my toner is low. The joys of working at home. Um, and if you know The Simpsons, if you know uh, Homer, he's always getting into trouble. And maybe you have a relationship that's kind of on off, but I know that, you know, the antics that Homer gets into, Marge is you know, more than justified in wanting to break up with him. So let's say she goes through an old family album and wants to get rid of him. She just wants to get him out of the photo. And we have seen this in rom-coms, if you've seen rom-coms. That person is mad, you know, they destroyed the picture. And you can see here, it's destroyed. I can't put it back together. This is what erasing does in Photoshop. Now, if I had just masked this, I could easily bring him back into the picture and nothing would be destroyed. So um, hopefully that helps kind of show you the concept of what masking is. So don't destroy your pixels, keep your images whole, don't cut them up. The other thing that I'll point out while we're here, um, when we're masking, so the first thing to think about again, that we just talked about in masking is what is visible or transparent in the image. So in masking, if I was doing this correctly, I want to make it so that Homer is no longer visible. In just a moment, you'll see the magic of Photoshop where Homer goes away. Now we do that by a really simple concept and the concept is that when we put a layer, a masking layer on, everything that is visible will be white. If you want to make something so that it's not visible, you color it black. For any Harry Potter fans, just we're reading a lot of cartoon and childish references today that just talks to you more about my maturity level. But in Harry Potter, he wears the cloak of invisibility, which is a very dark cloak. I think it's a black. So think of cloak of invisibility black. 
So in Photoshop, the easiest way of talking about that would be instead of cutting it or erasing it and destroying pixels, we go on to the layer mask and we paint this area black and then essentially Homer would go away. He would be transparent and we could no longer see him. So that's the most simple way. Um, now going back to, you know, if you've ever used Microsoft Paint or even Photoshop, there is a brush tool, but if you've painted before, sometimes, especially if you're not a professional artist, if you use a brush, it's not very precise. It, it's not the best tool to use. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, especially this week, we will start off by quickly using the brush to understand the concept, and then we'll move on to more precise techniques so that we get really smooth edges around whatever item it is that we're trying to isolate or mask from the other image. Even here, if you take a look at Marge, okay, if I was in Photoshop, you know, we want to be really smooth about the way that we cut her out. So the tool that we use, so in this case it was scissors, it would be really different if I use dull scissors versus an X-Acto knife versus like a laser cutter or like a Cricut cutter. Same thing in Photoshop. A brush does something different than all of the other selection tools that we're going to use. Many of them are more precise than others. So we'll spend some time so that you can learn about um, which technique works best for you. So again, um, in a nutshell, we want to use masking in order to control the transparency of a layer. Transparency means whether it's visible or not, and it's better to use masks so that we're not erasing or destroying pixels, right? So when we cut out a picture like this, we're basically doing the same thing digitally when we erase. We're really destroying the pixel, we're destroying the image. Simple concept to also understand is that the color white means that the object is visible. Or if you add the color black, it means that it is non-visible or it becomes transparent in that, uh, in that sense. So again, we'll be focusing on what masking is, how to make it more accurate, and how to precisely get everything selected so that in the end it doesn't look photoshopped, but it looks really smooth and professional. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with you more and we're gonna start off by doing a couple exercises in the next videos. Thanks. Goodbye everybody. Say goodbye to Homer and Marge. Hey friends. Big disclaimer here. This is not a tutorial. This is just to show you a concept. We were just talking about masks and I wanted to show you how I could break up Marge and Homer without destroying his photo, as I did with the scissors in the earlier part of this lecture. So again, remember, this is just to show you the concept. It's not to be a tutorial. I've got my layer one right here, and what I'm going to do is add a mask to it. And this little button down here is the mask button. So let me dance around for a minute. I add a mask. Let me break it down a little bit. Now I've got my layer with Homer and Marge and I've got my layer mask. It's really important that when we get into masking that you know what layer that you're working on. Um, as I mentioned before, anything that's white is visible. So you can see by the thumbnail that everything is visible because everything is white right now. Now if I hit B for brush, I've got a brush on here, you can see it right there, and right now my paint color is black. So that lets me know that whatever I'm about to paint or brush is going to disappear. See how Homer is disappearing? Okay, this is me breaking up with Homer, right? So he has just disappeared. If you take a look at my layer mask, do you see where I have painted black? Okay, so that means Homer is gone. Now let me back up a little bit. Say Marge is feeling better and she wants to uh, get back together with Homer. So I'm gonna switch the color to white, not by clicking anything here, but if I hit the X button, that switches me back to white. So I'm gonna click X and X again. Can you see the colors moving back and forth? So it's white. I'm gonna take my same brush and you can see here in my layer mask preview, his 
uh, where it used to be black, it's now white, and his head is back. Let me do that same thing on his arm over here. So take a look at my screen and also the thumbnail. So I'm gonna paint this area white. See in the preview, it filled it in with white. It takes a minute, but it gets there. And slowly but surely, I bring Homer back. Now again, it wasn't the most perfect way, but this is just to show you the concept of how masking works. And more importantly, it's really important to put the color on the right layer because if your mask ever looks like this, just know that you didn't paint your mask, you painted Homer. And this is where the Control Z or Command Z undo button is very handy. Or remember our history, we can also come in here and back up too. So it's going kind of back and forth here. Right, so that is the concept of masking and more on that in our next exercise.